All right, so today is October the 1st, uh, Monday, 2012, and I'm here with Dave Young, and we're going to talk about the phenomenal new um, uh, project he's working on called, uh, say the name. Shortcut Blogging. Yeah, and so if people would like to get in touch with you, what's that uh, way that, what's that business card? Uh, show me that business card again. Here's how you find Shortcut Blogging. This is well, a great the, business card. I, I just had these printed. I, I, it's an idea I stole from another guy, but but uh, that's the business card. But then the back of it is... Google, shortcut blogging. Type shortcut blogging into Google. You'll find us. Awesome. Yeah. That's a great idea for... I think I'm going to... I haven't had a business card for probably 20 years. And that I like that one good enough that I, I'd probably... Um, uh, get one that says Google David Favor because I own the first three pages of Google. So that's well, there you go. See, I, I didn't put Dave Young on there because there's yeah, there's there's a musician named Dave mm -hmm. Young. There's uh, I've got some competition. It's, it's sort yeah. of like being named John Smith. You know, it's yep. um, yeah, Dave Young's. There seem to be a bunch of us out there. Awesome. Well, t uh, but I am I am Dave Young on Twitter. So all oh, one okay. word. Yeah. Uh, so talk a little bit about uh, what is uh, shortcut uh, blogging. Well, in in my uh, the other hat that I wear, and we we talked a little bit about this in another video, is that I'm an advertising and marketing consultant mm -hmm. and uh, we, associated with the Wizard of Ads group out of Austin, Texas. One of the things that we found as we were helping our clients with their marketing and helping them, especially kind of establish a beachhead online. You know, right. a lot of these brick and mortar companies um, either had a, an awful website or just had a uh, maybe didn't have a website at all. Mm -hmm. and, and as you know, David, in, in the world of SEO, one of the best things you can do to establish your reputation and to be found, especially locally in a search engine, is to start creating content. And that usually means just start blogging. Um, it, blogging is, uh, on the face of it, pretty easy to do. You you get your website set up in a way that, that lets you blog, You know, use WordPress as a content management system, mm -hmm. and, and you can start blogging and writing and, and talking about the kinds of things you do for your customers and um, go from there. The search engines love it because it tells them you're live, you're local, you're real, yep. and uh, hopefully you're putting some good uh, types of keywords that you want to be found on in your local market. And it can be a great way to, to really generate traffic that you wouldn't otherwise get uh, even based on a Google local page or those kinds of things. I mean, you would agree with that, wouldn't oh, you? Yeah. I mean, that, that's good foundational SEO. Yeah, I mean, if you really come down to SEO, search engine optimization, really what it means is that it's just a way for people who are searching to find you it's it's a way to let you know to notify google and to notify your readers when they arrive they're the right place that's all seo is yeah and so if you built a website in 2007 and it had everything you needed on it and said everything you needed it to say mm -hmm. um, and didn't touch it in between then and now, Google is going to look at it and say, well, it was probably pretty relevant in 2007. It may still be, but they haven't given us any indication that they're even still alive. Alive, yeah. So if you can blog, uh, you're giving Google something new to chew on every week. Uh, you're at least letting them know you're raising the flag and saying, hey, Google, hey, I'm search engine alive. people, we're still out here. We're still kicking. And uh, we'd love for you to read what we just wrote about uh, this topic that's near and dear to the heart of our business. Mm -hmm. What we found, David, is we couldn't get our clients to do it. <laughs> I, I understand <laughs> As that. much sense as it makes to blog. Yeah. Uh, and as seemingly easy as it is, I mean, it's it's really a matter of just writing some good stories and then putting them on your website. Right. There are a lot of business owners that just couldn't find the time. Hmm. Right. That's that's usually the biggest hurdle is, man, I started a blog and I, I went real heavy for about six months and then I haven't posted anything. Um, and, and you know, the, the web is littered with uh, blogs that are on life support like that. They're just sitting <laughs> there ba blog. barely beating a pulse. Uh, and, uh, you know, nobody's bothered to, to write anything new on them. All right. And typically, if you sat down and asked the business owner why it, it comes down to I don't I don't have the time to do it. I don't have the time. I can't think of what I'm going to write, and I don't have the time to do it. So what they need is also, they need a shortcut, right? Right. So we, we thought, well, what can we do with these clients of ours to help them get that content up there? And Paul Boomer, my co-founder, and I both have a background in radio. Hmm. 
Uh, so I, I used to own uh, a couple of small stations in oh. western Nebraska. Cool. And uh, Boomer was involved with uh, a family of radio stations in Missouri and, and I think southern Illinois. Excellent. And as we got to talking about this, we're like, you know what? If if you took one of the announcers that works the midday shift on any station in the U.S., right? And there's 11,000 radio stations out there. Right. And all of these guys that work in radio on air mm-hmm. uh, are smart. Uh, they're uh, they're they're good at uh, they're good conversationalists. You know, if you sat down in the studio with them, they could ask you questions and learn about your business. And uh, you know, they're, they're just really good people. People uh, good at asking smart questions. Uh, yet they're underutilized by these radio stations. I don't think most of these guys know their true value. Right. Um, and for moonlighting, you know, they're happy to go out for a couple hundred bucks and go sling uh, hot dogs and Pepsi at the local Chevy dealer right. for a couple hours during a remote broadcast. Right. That's, that's, yeah. they, they think of that as some nice supplemental income. Well, we got to thinking, what if we took those same people and used their talents uh, and helped them do a little moonlighting in a way that uh, is something that uses their talents for what they're good at? And so what we started doing was hooking up our clients, our, our advertising and marketing clients, with a, a radio guy that could sit down and interview them oh, for five idea. or ten minutes about a topic that makes sense to, to blog on. And uh, at first, we, we were just doing podcasting with that. It's like, okay, you know, a, a lot of a lot of podcasters like to interview people. Right. Uh, it's like what you're doing right now, right? Yeah. You're interviewing me. Um, but we're not really showcasing your talents, right? You're, right? you're shining your spotlight on all of your guests. Right. What we wanted to do was, was turn the tables mm. and use our announcer to always shine the spotlight on our client. So right. the client becomes the guest. They're the one being interviewed in every instance. And then we thought, well, we're, if, if we just do podcasting, we're not really giving Google what they really want, which is right. words to chew on. Yeah. H- hang on just a second, Dave. Yeah. Special effects time. Come on. Girl. Come on. Who's here? Yeah, so, um, so, so I was enjoying watching them. Oh, yeah, I know. For, for those of you who um, have attended the Wizard Academy and uh, wondered a good way to uh, define particle conflict and particle stack, what we're doing in our conversation is particle stack. And having a uh, two small dogs romping in the background, that's particle conflict, something that's completely... Uh, you know, random. That's just or a third. It's, it's a third gravitating uh, body. Right, a third gravitating body. So actually, it was a third and fourth. There was a poodle and a and a little wolf back there. So anyway, <laughs> awesome. Well, so so well, so po- we- so uh, before you so podcasting. I mean, a lot of people hear the term podcasting. Um, so talk a little bit about uh, what people can. I mean, that's a good stage to start with. And so what you can do with podcasting and then how you took that a step farther into give into turning that into words where Google can consume it and use it. Well, what what we wanted to do ultimately was create written content for people to put on their blog, on their website, so that Google would look at you and say, hey, you're, you're local, you're alive, you're right. relevant. Um, <clears throat> A podcast is a half step towards that. Mm-hmm. Um, Google doesn't quite yet have the ability to listen to a podcast and figure out what all the words are on it. I mean, they're they're making great strides. If if you've ever uploaded a YouTube video recently, they it's they even close. do an automatic uh, transcription of that. Mm-hmm. Not always one hundred percent accurate, but no. it's pretty amazing. I haven't looked um, at that recently. Can you uh, can you take their transcription and download it and fix it and re-upload it? I don't know if you can re-upload it. I mean, you can certainly copy and paste it out of there. Yeah. I, I haven't really looked that, that close at anyway, it to, uh, to figure so, that out. So a transcript is basically taking the audio track of either an audio or a video and turning it into words because that's what Google works off of. So Sure. But the trouble with a transcript, if, if you've ever, uh, if you've studied great speakers, even and you guys like Paul Harvey, oh, yeah. you know, that was on the radio for 40 years. Um, if you ever read a transcript of one of his broadcasts, it doesn't amazing. make sense to read it. Oh, no. But. But he, as a speaker, if you listen to him, he's amazing. But if you read the transcript, 
not so it's good. It's fragments. Yep. It's 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 not well formed grammar, mm -hmm. and uh, it's very difficult to read. And that's true of most uh, spoken conversations. If we transcribed this conversation that we're right. having, um, a, a person that's very picky about grammar would just. Oh. have a fit yeah. right they, they would look at it and go oh my god these guys are idiots <laughs> so what we do but well, they may say is, that anyway dave <laughs> what's that they may say that anyway <laughs> well they might Even if but they but grammar. it's that's just the, that's the nature of spoken language right uh it's the nature of it, we, it it's not uh, it's not grammatically correct all the time especially no, because it's full of fragments, fragments. Yeah. So what we do is is we take the transcript of this. So we start with the recording, like mm -hmm. a little podcast. We transcribe it, and then we take the transcription and have it professionally rewritten into the words that that client would have spoke or would have written had they been inclined to actually sit down and write a blog post. So they, we we try to. Uh, we try to write the blog post in the voice of our client. Mm, okay. So if uh, if our client has kind of a down home uh, vernacular kind of flavor, that's right. the way the writing comes out. Our our editors are very good at saying, okay, well this this guy speaks like Will Rogers, so let's write like Will Rogers. Gotcha. Or this this guy speaks, you know, very uh, pretty formally uses uses big words. Uh, let's make sure that that comes across in how we translate this into spoken or into the written word for them as well. Right. So our ultimate goal then is to, is to go from an interview to the transcript to written content that they can then post on their blog cool. as, as they're writing. So, it, it, to, you know, to make that long process short, you, in, in a uh, single hour long recording session, can write um, a weekly blog post and, and get that posted on your website. Well, I know I know a good thing to talk about right now too is um, so if one of the hurdles is getting people to write. Another hurdle is just finding a topic for that person to write about. So talk about that little. Um, uh, pro I actually went through it again. I go through that periodically. That little uh, video that you uh, sent me. Uh, talk a little bit about the brainstorming uh, process and how people sign up for that on Shortcut Blogging. Sure, you're, you're absolutely right. So, like one of the worst things we could do would be to say, "Okay, we're, we've got a recording session scheduled with a client." <laughs> uh, now what? You know, at ten o'clock this morning, and we get on Skype with them and say, "Okay, we're going to record five blog posts today. Uh, what are we going to talk about, David?" And and, and you then go, the oh, person, crap. you know. I don't have five things we could talk yeah. about. If I had five things I could write about, I'd have done it. Yeah. <laughs> so what we do is at the very beginning of our client relationship with, with our shortcut blogging clients is we take them through this exercise that uh, was taught to us by an author, a guy named Keith Miller, who he passed away earlier this year uh, in, in February or March of 2012. But Keith was a multi-million selling mm -hmm. uh, author, uh, especially back in the 80s and 90s. He wrote uh, probably his biggest book was called The Taste of New Wine. It was a, a Christian book. Uh, he was well known in, in like the, the recovery type of, of field. Um, I don't know, 12 steps, but, yeah. but just, you know, uh, recovery, I guess, is, is the right word for it. Uh, and then Keith ended up teaching some writing classes uh, in, the, in the later years of his life at Wizard Academy. And one of the techniques that he taught in his writing class was this outlining process. And what happens is if, if I said, David, I need you to sit down and uh, give me, you know, go ahead and write out 52 things that you could blog about this year. Just make that list and send it to me. Um, most people would go, oh, my God, I can't do that. If they I could do that, I'd be me. blogging. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's that's that seems really simple. I, 52, 64, whatever it is, yep. um, I, I should be able to write that list out. But what happens is if you actually just take out a, a pen and paper and start to make that list, um, you'll hit a log jam after about a half a dozen topics and you'll go well no that's not a good one and you'll scratch it out you know you just start judging yourself on everything you write down and so what what keith came up with was this uh, and, and actually he got it from you know if, if we're going to give credit back where credit is due keith got this technique from a an entrepreneur that, that used it to build million dollar businesses he would sit down and, and quickly brainstorm you know all the different uh, issues and uh, components he would need to to map out a, a brand new startup cool but the way it works is uh, it it 
it compresses uh, the topic generation into right. uh, in, in a way that, that forces you to output these ideas uh, in a in a t totally false high pressure situation. <laughs> so, uh, and and what that forces you to do is is the left half of your brain. If if you've studied left right hemisphere type things, the left half of your brain is the part of the brain that judges yeah, things. So judger. as you start yeah. writing things down, the oh, left half no says, good. No, no, "That's that's a dumb idea. That was dumb when you." thought of it the first time and it's still it's dumb still it's dumb. gonna be dumb tomorrow don't write that down the right hemisphere of the brain um uh, doesn't have that capability yep the the right hemisphere says every idea is a good idea let's yep. get them on paper and you can come back and decide whether they're good or you can improve them right. so what we do is we we put an artificial deadline on the process of coming up with these topics and so we we produced a 37 minute video mm -hmm. and you you print out a six page uh, pdf that's got all the all it's like an outline and it's got all the lines on it that you will you'll hand write in all these ideas and we we put you in in some in kind of a stressful situation to be honest it's it's 37 minutes you hit the play button and you're not allowed to stop it you're not supposed to if you want to cheat you can cheat but <laughs> um so at the end of 37 minutes what you end up with is a list of 64 bloggable topics and, and the, these are all things that that make sense to your business they're all, all right. ideas that you could easily talk five to ten minutes on without having to do outside research you just don't have to sit down and write them now but as long as you have those topics, when when we then sit down with our interviewer, this this professional broadcaster, and he says, "What four topics are we going to talk about today?" You say, "Well, here's the four. We're, you know, and you, we've already sent him. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got a copy of that outline as well." And you just say, right. "Well, we're going to talk. We're going to do number 15, 16, 17, and eighteen today." Now, I think that's uh, and, extremely elegant. Yeah. And so all all that announcer has to do is open the door for you. You know, if, if he says, "Hey, David, uh, uh, this week we're gonna we're gonna talk about how to use uh, how to use Meetup to get new clients." Right. Go. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah, so now you're true. talking about something that you already know how to do, uh, and we know that we're gonna cut it off after five or ten minutes because we're gonna turn it into about seven hundred words, uh, right. maybe five hundred, seven hundred words that we're gonna put on a, on a blog. And this announcer, because he's not an expert in your business. He's not going to let you get away with um, just using a bunch of insider jargon either. So if, if right. you're in the roofing business, he's not going to let you say things like, well, you know, a typical roofer is going to use uh, the improper fasteners. And he's going to you know, say, what's that? <laughs> yeah, the, the radio guy, guy's going to say, wait, wait, fastener. What are you talking about? Well, you know, the things that hold the shingles down. Oh, you're talking about roofing nails? Yeah. <laughs> we don't call them that in the industry. We call them fasteners. That's right. Hey, guess what? The rest of us call them roofing nails. Yeah, so, you know, you, you bring up a really important um, uh, piece of this whole process that whatever a person knows about, they just know about. I call it uh, being on automatic. So a lot of times if I'm doing a, a converting something I know into a, a, a product, what I'll do is I'll I'll have a meetup event. I'll have people come to my house and I'll talk about something for half an hour, mm -hmm. and I'll have people you know write down their questions. And a lot of times they'll say, "Well, what does this word mean?" And that's something that you know if you're a roofer, you're on automatic about fastener. You don't think about I just use the word fastener and it means a roofing nail. No, but everybody else is saying fastener. What is that like? You're putting suspenders or Velcro on the roof. Sure. Or, what is or, that? or you know, hey, we're going to use uh, we're going to use architectural composition shingles on your yeah. roof. Oh, well, really? That's impressive. I well, thought we used asphalt shingles. Yeah, I thought well, yeah, you used asphalt that composite. I don't, oh, it's the same thing. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah that, well, that, that yeah, that's a good uh, a, a good point to make is that part of this discovery process will allow people to figure out what they're on automatic about, so people who are reading their blog entry can make sense of it. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you want it, you want it to be uh, accessible to the average Joe that, that's going to be your customer. So by using, uh, see, if you did this on your own, you wouldn't be aware enough to avoid the, those kind of insider right. jargon type of phrases. So using, using one of our announcers actually helps filter that. We make sure that you're not just speaking insider talk. Yeah, and in fact, if you go to, um, which thanks, Dave, for putting this up for people to use, is if you go to shortcutblogging.com slash brainstorming, mm -hmm. you can download a copy of um, the PDF, print it out, and hit go on the video, and 37 minutes later, you'll have 64 topics to write about.
Absolutely. We, awesome. Giving that away, we're, you know, a, a typical um, internet marketing, we are asking for your email address. Mm-hmm. Um, we're not, we're not very good at that. Um, <laughs> you mean you're not going to send uh, 18 it's like I'm, I'm trying to think of the last time we actually emailed anybody that, that was on there. What, so how so, long ago was um, it? Uh, but but it, it is something that, that we're making available, and uh, even when Paul and I, my, my business partner and I, when we've had uh, uh, a class at Wizard Academy teaching uh, blogging and how to build a website out of WordPress, we've okay. we've took people through this same exercise. Oh, good. And one of the one of the pieces of feedback that we always got back at the end of those classes was, I would have flown to Austin and paid exactly what I paid for a three-day class to just go through the outline exercise. Yeah, and Even though fact, it only lasted an hour, that was the one thing that they took away that, that they had the most value from. See, I think, I think a really great, I mean, this is completely off the subject, but I think a great, um, I think a great uh, course for the Wizard, of, of, uh, Wizard Academy would be just to do a day class where people go through the outlining process and just, you know, you start the class with, you know, here's the way it's going to work and you start the timer 37 minutes. And then at the end of that, you, you know, uh, go through and help people refine even more their topics. Yeah, I, I mean, that- well, you, you could either you could either uh, help them refine or uh, actually start writing. Yeah, and that, and that would be I would and, say, and then you know, give you, some feedback on the writing process. Yeah, you do the you know you do the the outlining process, and then you go through and you know I don't know somehow or another help refine those a little bit, and then that's the first half of the day, and then the next half of the day is you actually go through, and the goal is to have at least one uh, chunk of content to publish by the end of the day. I think that sure. would be a fabulous course for you guys to provide well you know um there is a class at wizard academy called the young writers workshop and uh, mike drew and scott frazier teach that Mm -hmm. class and they use this outlining they use the same process as as one of the elements of that class and when i said it's stressful uh, it is uh i I put my teenage daughters through it a couple years ago and and mike drew runs this thing and, and he's a bit of a Taskmaster, kind of a slave driver when he yeah. when he I've runs got, I've this gone exercise. I've through this with Michael Drew too, so I know. I mean, it's it's really funny. I mean, he's like, no, we're done with this. On to the next thing. Yeah, well, no, so no I, I give him a hard time to this day because he made my daughter cry during the exercise. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> well, you probably no need to make people cry, but it's it. I think just being on a, a clock. I've gone through this process uh, multiple times now. And I do it for each different, like I'm writing uh, several books now, and so I do it for each different topic so that it gives me a, a general outline of stuff to go through for a book. And here's, yeah, a, and- here's another really interesting thing to do. A lot of people are, um, uh, if you aren't, you could be a meetup organizer. A lot of people that are watching this already are. And so what you can do is you can take one of those uh, collections of topics like three or four topics and turn it into a meetup group just talk to a group of people about it have a discussion afterwards run a recorder doing the whole thing and it's a stereo recorder do it in a small room point one mic towards you one mic towards the room where you get the questions and you answer questions afterwards and you know you could have a serious amount of content to publish or a book to publish for that matter yeah, uh, that, that's the great thing about this this outline process. You can use it to plan a business. You can use it to plan a year's worth of blogging. You can plan a book. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, basically, the, the basic steps of it are uh, we, we start off with, uh, you know, your main topic. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next step is 16 uh, kind of categories of things that you want to talk about. And then ultimately, towards the end of that 37 minutes, you've got about 12 minutes to rapidly write down about 64 uh, individual topics that that then become your blog posts yep, those and are, you don't you don't it. think you'll be able to do it i mean if i just said you've got 12 minutes to write them down uh, you probably wouldn't do it so we do a little bit of organization to kind of mm-hmm. guide it first you get some main topics and then think of four four shoot offs of that or, or subcategories of that those become your your blog posts yeah, it's awesome. and again I, I give full credit to keith miller it's a brilliant process yeah um and and we've uh, we've used it with hundreds of people and and uh, it, it always becomes the most valuable gift that we gave them even in a class that they paid a lot of money to take 
Yeah, so that's funny that uh, people say that that was, uh, and I, I could see where that would be a cornerstone of uh, any kind of class. It'd be a great way to start off most most uh, classes, in, independent of what they were. Yeah, I mean, there are some people that that's the biggest obstacle in writing is I just can't think of stuff to write about. Right. If I if I had a topic sitting in front of me, I could easily pound out three to five hundred words. And so there's a lot of people that that's that's all they need. Mm -hmm. Right. That's this outline process is all they need uh, to to really kickstart their blogging efforts. Right. Uh, for those people that need to take it one step further, though, we offer this service where we we hook you up with our uh, radio announcer. We transcribe. We re-edit uh, for a couple hundred bucks extra we can even go so far as to produce it for a fully formed podcast with an intro and close oh, and cool. music backgrounds uh, we'll parse it out for social media so if you want to you know post this up on your blog on a monday and have five different tweets that are going to go out the rest of the week or things that you can post to facebook we can parse that out for you and for a few bucks more even even post them for you as well awesome so this would be really great for a person that um has a um, an already existing business that would just like to you know bump their revenue up you know add a significant amount of additional revenue for a small investment. Yeah, I, you know the ideal client for us, the, the people that, that this becomes really easy to do. If you're already an expert, I mean, if you're not an expert at what you do, this is um, not this is right. going to showcase the fact that you're not an expert. Yeah, this is not not for. I, yeah, this is this is a good point to make. If you're an expert, in other words, you, I, I call it the ten year rule. If you've done something for the last ten years almost every day without pay, mm -hmm. you're an expert. You've done your you know the ten thousand hour rule. You've yeah. You've put in, you know, the amount of time required to really understand a topic, and so that's the that's really. I mean, I've looked over Dave's um, uh, product and uh, or their the uh, website, and it's this is really geared towards somebody that's an expert that would like to to compress the time. In other words, to uh, to accelerate or um, uh, make the their time value of money higher. In other words, instead of you know, having a blog post every month, this will take it down to every week. And so, yeah, you know, and, and, and it lets you do, it lets you create weekly content with a, a one month. I mean, what, what we do is we have that recording session. We do it one time a month. Right. And we try to do enough, uh, enough interviews to create posts, uh, weekly posts until we have to do another recording session. Right. We, so that's a, that's shoot a good, those down our, yeah. our editing pipeline. Yeah. That's a good point. Um, too. So, so we, you, we come back with that. Yeah. You don't have to, you know, get together and do everything, you know, every day or even every week. It's, um, you know, if you really start to sit down and figure out that it only takes really about half an hour to an hour to create enough content for, you know, four, blo four or five blog posts for a month. I mean, you're, you're basically, it's a, you know, a less than an hour investment on your part every month to have a ongoing stream of content that's really going to, I think, personally generate a lot of additional income for most yeah. people that are experts already. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, so kind of the criteria, you're, you're an expert, mm -hmm. um, your time is worth more than your money. Right. Uh, because if, if you had the time, you'd, you'd write. Right. You you just sit down and do this, um, and and so you know at, at, even at at our lowest price entry level uh, service where we just we just send back a word document to you that's basically the deliverable is the rewritten words that you spoke, uh, three ninety five a month. Um, yeah, I mean that's less than a hundred dollars a post. Yeah, and I mean, and you know if if you were gonna if you were gonna hire a ghostwriter to do that, oh, you might be able to do it for a little less. Maybe. I don't know, but ghostwriters end up eating a lot more of your time. Yep. Uh, the the challenge here's the challenge or the difference primarily that I see between what you're doing and like hiring a ghostwriter or heaven forbid hiring somebody off Fiverr if you think that you're going to get this done off Fiverr for five bucks is that um, the the quality of people Dave's working with is um, it's probably ten or twelve rungs above what you'd get access to anywhere else and by the time it's all said and done. Um, for what all is being offered here, I think you'd probably, I think you'd have a hard time going someplace like Fiverr and getting anything even remotely close to the quality. I just well, don't I agree. And, and the reason for that isn't necessarily our process. It's the fact that you're the expert. Right. And so if you get somebody off Fiverr, um, I think the best you're going to get off Fiverr or Elance or, or just hiring it done as, as ghostwriters, if you just need good, straightforward SEO fodder, Mm -hmm. 
you know, that you're just going to feed to the search engines that's just full of your keywords, but doesn't doesn't have to be expertly written. Right. We're probably not the right solution. Yeah. But if you're trying to demonstrate your expertise and share right. uh, real solutions for, for people that might end up hiring you uh, for whatever it is that you do, this is a good way to showcase that, to show them, yeah, I, I know what I'm writing about. I'm, I'm an expert in this field. So, you know, if you're a lawyer, if you're a doctor, um, if you're a business owner that owns a business that just requires some some knowledge and you you've been in it for a long time and you're an expert at it and you're you're good at helping people solve the kinds of problems that you help with this is a good mix for you or well, a good match for you an- another important um i think uh, benefit of using uh, technology like what you've come up with is if you go out to Fiverr and just hire somebody or Odesk or Elance or wherever the uh the quality of continuity across you know, hundreds of posts over years and years of time. There, the just having your own voice. If you hire a ghost, a different ghostwriter for every post or every few posts, holding the continuity so that you actually represent your your particular style and um, vernacular and what you're trying to share with people, the persona that you're trying to create to connect with your tribe or your market, mm-hmm. or you translate that, eh, you just can't get that hiring a random person different every time. It just won't work. Sure. Um, so anyway, I, I, I think what you guys are doing. Well, uh, you know, uh, uh, a strange, uh, this is something that hasn't happened yet, but we, we think that eventually it will happen with our announcers, uh, is that they'll, there will be a time when some of them get hired away from their radio station job by one of their shortcut blogging clients. I could see that happening. Think about it. Uh, one of our clients is an online, it's, it's a cloud-based construction project management company. Okay. Okay, uh, our our uh, our radio guy from uh, you know the Midwest, a small town, uh, has been conducting hour-long interviews with their president and CEO for the last twelve months. Hmm. Okay, he's probably got more one-on-one time with the president and CEO of that company than most people inside the company. Right. Uh, he's also we 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 actually put together a custom project for them where we're actually producing case studies uh, by interviewing their clients. Interesting. So where we're doing five or ten minute interviews with their CEOs, we're doing forty five minute to an hour interviews with their customers, mm. rewriting, transcribing, and rewriting those where they're becoming three or four page PDF case studies. Right. And we can get we can get their customers to say way more about them than they would if they just sent them a form and said, "Hey, would you write us a testimonial?" Yeah. So the, so this is an important distinction too. And I so think. and so my yeah. thought is, if if they're ever looking for somebody to be uh, oh, that staff. inside champion inside their company, this is the guy. Who's, yeah. Who better than the guy that's that's interviewed all their customers? Right. Uh, that spent oh, right. yeah. hours and hours uh, having Skype conversations with with the highest levels uh, of management of their company. Company. This guy is is becomes as big an insider as anybody outside their company ever will be. And I think you I think you made a uh, an important distinction too is there's a difference between putting a form up on your web page and saying give me a testimonial and getting two or three lines about oh yeah this is the you know the best um, I don't know hammer since sliced bread if you're buying hammers or hardware as opposed to doing like a, an hour long conversation with the customer to actually discover how this particular person's product Product and services change the direction of this this uh, third party. And especially, business. I mean, you, you think you think about that category of business, right? Um, how are you going to get the president or the CEO of a general contractor <laughs> construction company? How right. are you going to get them to write uh, two thousand words for you? Good luck. It's not going to happen. No. But they're happy to spend forty five minutes on the phone with us. Well, and imagine if you if you went to one of those uh, that construction company's uh, customers. That's even worse. Saying trying to get them to write two thousand. Well, that's words. what I mean. Yeah, they're yeah. The, the, yeah. So you uh, you've got you know you've got the the insider, the CEO of the company, and then going down to each one of the the clients of that company. I you know I think this is a 
I think you guys have got a gold mine, you know, knock it out of the ballpark sort of deal going here. So well, I appreciate that. Kudos, uh, we, we're we excited about it. We've been working a lot on the infrastructure in the back end. Cool. So, you know, we, we don't have loads of customers, but what we've been trying to do, you know, everybody in a startup situation, uh, you know, the goal is to build it so that it's scalable so that you can right. take on clients rapidly. And that that's what Paul and I have been working on the last Excellent. six months is, is to make sure that when, uh, when people start to really figure out uh, how well this is working, we, we can take on clients quickly, you know, and, and uh, we're, we're getting to that point. Excellent. Well, so um, just to wrap up here, I think, um, you know, I'm thinking back about our conversation about doing a day long um, uh, workshop about just walking through this um, uh, the process of creating your 64 topics. Uh, if somebody, if somebody'd like to um, inspire you to offer that course, what what do they? How do they contact you and tell you, gee whiz, I went through this thing and I'd like to do this in a room with some people and go mm -hmm. farther. How, how do they? How do they do that? Just just go to shortcutblogging.com and hit the contact okay. link at the bottom of the page and and shoot us a note. Hey, yeah, David so Favor said you'd do this for us if uh, if there was enough of us. So you know, here's my vote. Awesome. Yeah, well, I think cool. it'd be that'd be fun. Yeah. Well, anything else you'd like to say to wrap up about uh, shortcut blogging? No, I really appreciate you uh, taking the oh, time to, to have this interview, David. Uh, it think, means I a lot to me. I, I've enjoyed getting to know you back at yeah. Wizard Academy and running into you again uh, a couple weeks ago. So uh, I appreciate it. Cool. Well, you're very welcome. And, uh, you know, I'd, like, I, like I said uh, uh, before we started, I mean, I, I'm kind of doing a lot of these interviews with people that I, I really think have some interesting, useful technology. Um, and, you know, uh, I've, I've seen a lot of um, products that sort of have attempted to do what you guys are doing. And I think this one, the way that you've got your your um, whole, um, the flow of how you're acquiring and uh, converting the information into, you know, Google SEO candy is kind of what it is. I think, I think it's, um, you guys have got a, a winning formula here. Well, thank you. You know, and again, it's, um, it's not a technology startup. You know, that's, mm. that's the thing. This is, um, uh, we, we've had people ask, you know, if, 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 if there's big affiliate kind of slices that can be carved off here. It's like, no, nah, not really, because no, this really. is labor intensive. Yeah. We're, you're going to, you're talking to real people. We're not right. using automated uh, transcription services. Oh, yeah, that's services. a good, we're not, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, you know, I mean, and we're using, uh, we're using experts to rewrite. I mean, these are yep. um, some of, some of our editors uh, are, are at least English majors, some of them graduate level uh, master's degree type people with in English and and the, this is actually one of their more enjoyable tasks is rewriting some of our content as opposed to some of the boilerplate things that they're they're busy with other times so, so, they're, so they're they're not all full-time people with us but uh, they're you know they are experts yeah so that, that's a I think that's probably a good uh, point to wrap up here is um, I participate in a lot of uh, you know black hat backroom SEO groups and there's always you know the 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 goal of these guys is really to game the system and gaming the system means to use uh, what you're talking about as article spinners where you yeah you know you take some article and you say I'd like to spin this into 18 different versions which means you take phrases and words and paragraphs and rearrange them so that you you're just using different words to create a similar meaning problem is is that google eh, they do not like that and they've got um last time i um you know they published any information about it they have a group of 400 human reviewers now and they've got algorithms that scrape the web looking for uh, article spinning and every day their their algorithms get better so if you know my recommendation is if you if you if you'd like real content that will actually get you some SEO juice, in other words, is useful, don't buy a service that spins articles for, you know, $97 an article. Hire a human being through this process and actually have something that's useful created that, me, you know, Google. I'll, I'll, I'll end on, on my SEO tip that we give our clients. Okay, good. The SEO tip. So if, if, if you want your blog post to have some good SEO value and, and, and you're concerned with, with organic search and, and uh, on your keywords, here's, here's the tool, <laughs> right? Take a pen and write your keyword. On the tool. On the tool. It's a sticky note. And then tape it 
on your monitor <laughs> where it will remind you to say that keyword a couple times during the course of the interview. Yep. Our transcriptions, uh, our transcriptionists will pick up that. Uh, our editors will include it because really, when when we when you get down to it, the only thing we're editing are your words. Right. We're not going out and doing additional research. We're taking exactly what you said, rewriting it, making it readable and good written content. So if you want keywords in it, speak the keywords. Right. Perfect. Outstanding. It's that easy. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, a thousand people by the end of the day sending you an email saying, hey, teach a class at the Wizard Academy about how to do this thing. <laughs> I'll be there, man. All I need is, is, a, is a plane ticket. <laughs> awesome. All right, Dave. Well, thanks for the time today. And uh, we'll wrap this video up then. Thank you, David. You're welcome. Take care.